Hey, my good friends, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. In the garage this week is the all new 2024 Mazda CX-90 with its turbocharged inline six. So we're gonna do a full underhood tour outlining all of the major technical features as well as the maintenance service points. The all new 2024 Mazda CX-90 made its debut and it showcases the brand's first new front engine rear drive based chassis architecture in decades. Under the hood are also a number of buzzworthy new powertrains, a pair of inline turbocharged sixes paired with a mild hybrid system and a turbocharged four cylinder plug-in hybrid. Our CX-90 Turbo S tester featured the top dog 3.3 liter turbocharged inline six with 340 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque. And that's when it's running on premium unleaded. It can run on regular unleaded fuel, but horsepower then drops to 319. Getting to actually see it and the engine bay's vital organs requires the removal of multiple layers of cover panels. Once free and clear, we can see this new gem. The inline six is the first from the brand and we're told their most powerful production engine ever. It's made into an eight speed automatic transmission and features a 16.6 .6 horsepower electric motor between it and the engine. In lieu of a torque converter, a set of electronically controlled clutches manage all of the power transfer. The 0.33 kilowatt hour lithium ion hybrid battery itself is located under the vehicle, specifically under the area of the driver's seat. The power converter and control unit for the hybrid system is mounted next to and on top of the automatic transmission. Thus, all of the 48 volt wiring is packaged away from the engine compartment. While not a full hybrid like most, this system provides boost power to the engine at slow speeds and facilitates a smoother startup with the idle start-stop system. It can also provide regenerative braking to recharge the battery as you go. Our tester with all-wheel drive was rated at 23 miles per gallon city, 28 highway, and 25 MPG combined. The engine itself features the latest technological features we expect. Chain-driven dual overhead cams with variable timing, four valves per cylinder, and direct fuel injection. Being an inline six inherently brings a higher level of refinement and in internal balance physics than a V6 engine, and thus is much smoother and has a much more pleasurable sound. Following the airflow, the intake charge starts at the front of the engine bay and travels into the air filter box mounted at the driver's side. It then travels through an intake tube around the back of the engine and into the turbocharger which is mounted on the passenger side. From there it travels up and over the engine to the driver's side and through an air to water intercooler mounted below the composite plastic intake plenum. From there it makes its way into the cylinders. On top of the engine you can see most of the spark plug coil packs but the rearmost is obscured. Servicing that might take a little bit of extra time. Spent combustion gases then exit into the turbocharger, which mounts directly to the head with an integral exhaust manifold. It has an electronically controlled wastegate and the main catalyst is mounted directly to it, hence all the heat shielding. You'll also notice it features a cooled EGR loop system at the driver's side top of the engine. Always note this will be hot after the engine's been running. When it comes to service and maintenance, you'll need to remove a number of the engine's covers and access panels to reach all of its fluids. The engine oil filler cap and dipstick can be found at the top of the engine. The main engine coolant reservoir is located at the front passenger side over the wheel well. Next to it is the windshield washer fluid noted by the blue cap. The air filter is mounted at the driver's side front of the engine bay and can be easily replaced without tools. Just pop a couple of clips. The main 12 volt battery, it's mounted on the passenger side firewall, seen and accessed with a cover removed. On the opposite side, you'll also need to remove an access cover to get to the brake fluid reservoir, which sits on an electronically controlled brake motor unit. Looking around the engine compartment, a few items of note. The Mazda CX-90, being a little bit more of an upscale product, uses cast aluminum shock towers for extra strength and light weighting. They're braced to the firewall bulkhead with substantial steel outriggers. Looking ahead to the front, you can see the electric cooling fan. Always keep your hands clear, even when the engine is turned off. Well, there you have it, my friends. Under the hood and all of the technical nuts and bolts stuff around the all-new 3.3 liter turbocharged inline six under the hood of the CX-90. Now, we have a full test drive on this vehicle. You can see that on our partner channel, Test Driven TV, right there. You can also subscribe to TDTV Garage right there if you're into this kind of technical nuts and bolts stuff, a little different from what we do over there. Either way, 
Stay tuned.